Hey, Jeff with Master Medics here. Thank you so much for checking out this video on what's controlling respiration and understanding the actual neurological process that's happening here in order to make respiration smooth and easy and what increases and decreases that process. So let's get into it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do get notifications on all our new videos. So that way, again, you don't miss a thing. This is specifically for EMT and paramedic students that are struggling in school or just wanna be that A-level student that, uh, that they've always wanted to be. Let's Let's go. So what controls respirations? We know that our lungs are trying to manipulate pressures in order to inspire and expirate and expire. But what exactly is controlling that process? Because we know that we can, you know, breathe faster, like mentally, actually physically breathe faster and breathe slower and even hold our breath but we don't think about it all the time. There's a automatic process that's actually happening within our body that is allowing us to do this without even thinking about it. And so that is what we're gonna control or talk about here. And so right here at the base of your brain, you have your medulla. And your medulla is, if I was gonna kind of point it out here, your medulla is right here, okay, the base of your brain. And the medulla has, a, uh, and that, that base of the brain has a few different pieces that we need to talk about here. And it essentially kind of looks like this. If I was going to enhance it, it kind of looks like that. Okay, it has like a little lump at the top and then a straight piece kind of going down like so. Okay, so this is the, the medulla. Now there's a few pieces in the medulla that we need to be aware of. Okay, we have a bigger guy up here. This is your pontines, okay, or your pawns. Okay, your pawns up there. Then you have another couple little spots here. Um, I'm gonna go with black just so you can see it. Okay, you have one here on the front. Okay, and this is your uh, ventral and dorsal uh, medullary groups. Okay, you have one here, your ventral and your dorsal medullary groups. And these two, these three together are going to create um, your, essentially the rhythm of your respiration. So if you noticed, I'm sure you have, that your rhythm, your respirations are not jerky all over the place. Or if you're talking about someone that has increased ICP and chain stokes breathing, chain stokes breathing is actually responsive of pressure on these particular areas. Because these three together are going to create the rhythm and the smoothness of that rhythm of your respiration. It doesn't feel jerky to you as you're breathing on a regular basis. It's calm, it's controlled, it's almost kind of like a, like ocean, like waves kind of idea that it's always consistent. And it's that consistency is all due to your pons and your dorsal and ventral medullary centers, okay? So that is where all that is going to happen here. And I'll put these guys, okay, ventral, and dorsal medullary center. Okay, so the ventral and dorsal medullary center here uh, within the, the, the medulla themselves. Okay, so that's your the first part. So we know that those guys are controlling it within the brain themselves. Okay, but let's say that like, but you know that sometimes in um, when you are, let's say you're really scared, your respirations increase. Okay, that's actually a response from your high centers, your brain's high centers, and they're sending a signal down to your medulla saying, hey, we need to breathe faster. Okay, so fear, um, exhaustion or exercise or anything along those lines that are creating that, um, that need to breathe faster in a sense that you're afraid or you're excited or you're exercising all come from the higher centers of your brain stimulating your pons and your ventral and dorsal medullary centers to send a signal to your lungs themselves, um, more accurately your intracostal muscles and then your diaphragm. So it's actually gonna send a signal to both of those in order to go, okay, breathe faster, we're excited, or breathe faster, we're afraid. And that's being told by your higher centers in your brain to your, uh, to your medulla, sending signals to your intercostal muscles and your diaphragm to breathe faster.
Okay, so that's the first part about it. Now the other things that are going to increase or um, basically um, manipulate or tell your centers in order to actually breathe faster or breathe slower is another part. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw out the heart here. Okay, because it actually is. And then your heart, you have your aorta up here and then you have your carotid arteries like so branch off like that and this and this is a really rudimentary drawing uh, but the idea here is that th what's going to happen is you actually have what we call chemoreceptors and these chemoreceptors are here in the aortic arch and also in the carotid arteries so you, these three chemoreceptors are going to be list or actually going to be basically testing the blood they're going to be testing things like co2 they can be testing things like oxygen and another one is going to be testing is ph okay and they're testing those in order to again create and maintain homeostasis and so for example in these uh in these chemoreceptors if it says that you had a um, you had too much CO2 in your blood as it's passing those chemoreceptors. Too much CO2 means that we need to get it out of here. We need to offload it because too much CO2 is going to create problems. And so these chemoreceptors are going to send, I'm going to change the color just so you can see it a little bit better. It's going to send a message from those chemoreceptors to the medulla saying, hey, we want to breathe faster because we have too much CO2. We need to get it out of here. So from there, it sends a signal to the intercost muscles in the diaphragm to say we need to breathe faster and the way that it tells it to do that is that it creates more stimulus and so it's basically the more firing of those nerves the faster we breathe the slower firing of those nerves the slower we breathe and that's what's basically going on here is that it's basically sending a signal to the medulla saying i need you to fire more nerve impulses to the lungs to say breathe faster and that's what's going on there and if we have not enough oxygen, you can imagine the same thing is going to happen. It's going to send a signal saying, hey, we don't have enough oxygen. The best way to get enough oxygen is to breathe faster. So again, it's going to send rapid fired signals to the diaphragm and the intracostal muscles in order to breathe faster, in order to bring in more oxygen and so on and so forth. So that is essentially the controller respirations. The main center that's controlling directly is the medulla, but the chemoreceptors themselves are what's really going to influence and send the information the medulla needs in order to basically determine what our respiratory rate is depending on what's going on in the blood at that particular moment.